Welcome to Just Asia, HRC TV's weekly human rights program. These are the headlines. International Human Rights Day 2018 Human rights in Bangladesh worsen ahead of elections. In Indonesia, Human Rights Day commemorates outside presidential palace. India's state and vigilance groups reverse human rights gains. Nepal must provide justice for teenage Nimalapant on Human Rights Day. Four years after the coup, democratic space in Thailand greatly reduced. Bangladesh sees no progress after one year of diplomats' disappearance. Burma's Aung San Suu Kyi to lose freedom of Paris. Welcome to AHRC TV's Just Asia. I'm Alexandra. This week, Just Asia focuses on International Human Rights Day, commemorated annually on December 10. The day marks the adoption of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948. This year, 2018, is the 70th anniversary of the Universal Declaration, which is a milestone document proclaiming the inherent rights that all human beings are entitled to, regardless of race, nationality, religion, sex, birth or other status. The declaration sets out universal values on a common standard of achievement for all peoples and all nations. While the declaration's universal values of equality, justice and human dignity continue to provide a beacon of light on its 70th anniversary, its promise is yet to be fully realized. People around the world continue to face discrimination and violence due to their gender, beliefs and ethnicity, such as Burma's Rohingya and minority groups in Pakistan and Indonesia. Governments use a variety of tactics to suppress their critics' right to expression and association. From intimidation to violence, seen in Bangladesh, India, Thailand and China, there is an increasing trend in Asia for governments to enact new regulations monitoring the use of social media and the internet, and further restricting people's freedom of expression. Bangladesh's catastrophic human rights situation has only deteriorated over the year. 2018 saw consistent and forced disappearances, extrajudicial executions, and systematic torture and ill-treatment of detainees in custody. The incumbent government of Sheikh Hasina has systematically muscled people's freedom of expression and freedom of assembly and association using state machinery. The law enforcement and intelligence agencies, judiciary, the Anti-Corruption Commission, the National Bureau of Revenue, and the NGO Affairs Bureau have all been used against targeted individuals and groups to stifle dissents. The spree of fabricated cases against dissidents, opposition supporters and political leaders, as well as ordinary citizens also continues. In the lead-up to the 11th parliamentary elections, the government is effectively chasing away the opposition. Just Asia speaks to the Asian Human Rights Commission's liaison officer, Muhammad Asrafusaman, to learn more about the situation. When we look at the World Human Rights Day coming in a few days' time, and we look at the human rights record of Bangladesh, we see a catastrophic picture. Uh, in the country. Enforced disappearances, extrajudicial executions, systemic torture, and a pattern of fabricating criminal cases against the political opposition and also the dissenting voices involving civil society actors, human rights defenders, uh, and anybody who is uh, using the online platforms, Facebook, Twitter or blogs to criticize the incumbent government of Sheikh Hasina. And now the situation has been much worse than the previous 11 months in the lead up to the 11th parliamentary election in the country, which is scheduled on 30th December of this month. The opposition is being chased by the law enforcement agencies. According to the plan of the and instructions of the ruling political party, have been registering imaginary cases against the opposition activists and leaders of the crimes that has never committed by anybody in the country. However, 
they were accusing the opposition activist. The election commission is cancelling the uh, nomination papers of the opposition party with various excuses. Some are so ridiculous that even a credit card bill has not been paid for uh, citing that excuse the election commission has rejected a nomination paper of a famous candidate. Uh, on the other side, the ruling party candidates having been convicted by courts uh, in criminal cases with imprisonments as high as 13 years, their uh, I mean nomination papers have been uh, declared valid. Uh, on the other hand, the opposition uh, leaders and uh, candidates are being the victims of political biasness by the judiciary and the election commission. So, in such a situation the whole world need to focus on Bangladesh's situation what is happening in the next three weeks in that country in the lead up to the parliamentary election and stand beside the victims of those human rights abuses taking place in the country. In Indonesia, victims of human rights violations and their family members gathered in front of the presidential palace to commemorate International Human Rights Day. They called for President Widodo's administration to investigate past abuses and current human rights cases that remained unresolved. President Widodo will finish his term next year, having done nothing to address various human rights cases during his four-year presidency. In fact, President Widodo has ignored victims' voices to establish an ad hoc human rights court based on Law No. 26 of 2000, while continuing with the establishment of the controversial National Truth and Reconciliation Commission. So far, a local TRC has been established in Aceh province. And this week, victims and family of victims in Aceh have conducted public hearings regarding past abuses and a commemoration of International Human Rights Day. On December 1st, however, Papuan students in East Java province were dispersed when they gathered to commemorate the history of Papua. India was elected once again as a member of the UN Human Rights Council for a three-year fixed term this year. The same year saw the worsening of the country's already poor human rights situation. There was no abatement in the violence and killings in armed insurgency hit states like Jammu and Kashmir and Khattisgarh. Meanwhile, there was an increase in attacks against minorities and marginalized communities, including mob lynchings. Attacks against human rights defenders and outspoken journalists also increased, with numerous deaths during the year. Several noted human rights activists were also arrested for being Maoists, including famous advocate Suda Bharadwaj, one of the national leaders of the People Union for Civil Liberties. India's largest human rights organization, Professor Gautam Navlaka, renowned activist academic, and Anand Tetamte in whose case the Supreme Court of India had to intervene. In sum, India seems to be in besieged by attacks from authorities and vigilant groups, reversing many of the human rights gains made by the relentless struggle of civil society. Nepal saw a year of poor protection of human rights. The government instead was seen to further restrict rights by introducing harsh law to control the functioning of human rights. NGOs and INGOs with its national integrity policy. Strict media regulations were also enacted and the government is now also controlling the use of Facebook and Twitter. Several persons have even been arrested for writing against the government and politicians on Facebook and Twitter. Most recently, the government has directed media houses to stop writing about 13-year-old Nirmala Pant, who was found raped and murdered on July 27. Nirmala went missing on July 26, but the police showed an unwillingness to search for her that same night. Since then, while senior police officers investigating the case have been recalled and suspended, there has been no progress in unrecovering her murderers. The police were found to destroy evidence, including washing her trousers in muddy water. 
They have also been questioning innocent people, even those with mental disabilities, instead of going after the real culprits. Nimala's case has shaken the whole country, and people from all walks of life have come together seeking justice for her. On the occasion of International Human Rights Day, the Nepal police and government must work towards justice for Nimala. In Thailand, four years after the 2014 coup, democratic and civil space has been greatly reduced. The NCPO, the Junta ruling party, has systematically arrested, detained and prosecuted persons for exercising their rights to freedom of expression and freedom of peaceful assembly. According to the Thai Lawyer for Human Rights, by May 2018, at least 264 public activities and events had been barred impeded or interfered with by the NCPO or military officials. This includes at least 136 events that were shut down, while 128 events were carried out together with government threats or interference. Furthermore, at least 378 persons in 50 cases have been charged with violating the ban on political gatherings of five or more persons. At least 214 persons in 15 cases have been charged with the Public Assembly Act 2015. At least 92 persons have been charged for sedition. At least 162 individuals have been charged with defaming the Thai monarchy. Since January 2018, the We Want to Vote movement has peacefully called on the NCPO to hold general elections. In response, the NCPO has filed complaints against a number of protesters. Some 130 individuals have been prosecuted in relation to this movement. ในวันที่ทั้งทางพรรคการเมืองเองรวมถึงประชาชนรวมถึงระเบียบที่จะออกมาเนี่ยจะมีผลเป็นการจํากัดสิทธิเสรีภาพของประชาชนเนี่ยในการที่จะออกมาแสดงความคิดเห็นในระหว่างมีการเลือก
for instance, an article published by a local newspaper right after my father was abducted plainly states that uh, law enforcement were already aware of who was responsible and as such the investigation would not proceed as expected. Do you see any similarity or difference between the status of your father's case and the other hundreds of disappearances cases in Bangladesh? Um, in my opinion, my father's case does mirror the overall, what I would term, a pandemic of enforced disappearances within Bangladesh. And this is particularly in terms of police inaction, as I mentioned earlier, as well as um, overall indifference from the government uh, officials and authorities. Moreover, there's been a general unwillingness by the media to investigate. For example, we were told by a crime reporter from a prominent Bangladeshi newspaper that it's actually a good thing that we had allegedly stayed quiet about the whole incident. And this was actually a crime journalist who had initially reported on my father's case. So that gives you an idea of the ground situation. Um, but it's important to note that the majority of victims in the past have mainly been linked to the political opposition, whereas my father's disappearance followed a spate of cases that involved members of civil society who had no known political affiliation. This sends across the message that absolutely no one is safe anymore and that any form of dissent is punishable in perhaps the worst of ways. The single threat that ties together these hundreds of different victims has been the silence that we, the families, have had to endure in the aftermath of the disappearances. What would you expect from the international human rights community regarding Bangladesh human rights situation? Most recently, in November, the European Parliament adopted a joint resolution on the human rights situation in Bangladesh, and in this they explicitly highlighted my father's disappearance. But in spite of all this, the number of disappearances and other human rights abuses in Bangladesh continue to increase and in some cases even accelerate. So I think it's crucial for the words of these different agencies to be translated into action in ways that actually compels the authorities to produce real and tangible results. The government of Bangladesh needs to be taught that these violations, which are which go against you know all international standards of um, conduct, will not be tolerated, and that these crimes cannot be allowed to continue as they have been for so many years, with your accountability and complete impunity for those responsible. So human rights organizations and activists must continue to rise up and protest against these abuses and ensure that the victims are never forgotten. Lastly, Aung San Suu Kyi is likely to lose her honorary French Freedom of Paris for failing to speak out against the abuse of the Rohingya, a spokeswoman from the Paris Moyers office said. Similar decisions have been made by the cities of Glasgow, Edinburgh and Oxford, while Canada has already revoked the Burmese leader's honorary citizenship. Amnesty International also stripped her of her Ambassador of Conscience Award. The world has been outraged not only by Burma's atrocious crackdown against its minority Muslim community, but also at the silence of Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi, once touted as a democracy icon. While some 700,000 Rohingya fled the military crackdown since August 2017, Aung San Suu Kyi has done nothing to rein in the military. That is all for this episode of Just Asia. For more on this and other issues, please visit www.humanrights.asia or www.alrc.asia/justasia. Thank you for watching and see you next week.